Hey, pool chasers. It's difficult running a business, isn't it? I mean, there's so many different hats to wear and things to balance. It can be tough to take the time needed to fully understand each important part of the business. We had a tough time doing that as well in the beginning. One of those things that can be tough to understand is general liability insurance. Most of us have an LLC or corporation of some sort, but that isn't really enough to protect you should an incident occur. Those things can protect your personal assets, but how are you going to pay for something if you or your team makes a mistake or an accident happens? That's where general liability insurance comes in. Our guest today shares with us the ins and outs of liability insurance and why you need it. We go over everything from what it is exactly, what the common incidents are, what is not covered, how to file a claim if something does happen, and much more. As a business owner, it is vital to protect yourself, your family, and your team. So listen closely and please enjoy episode 118 with Danielle Barr of the Swimming Pool Pro Alliance. Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Viafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. So where, where'd you grow up again? So yeah, I grew up in Encinitas. Um, I moved there. We used to live in Escondido. We moved there probably when I was about 11 or 12 years old. Started, I was in private school like all the way up to 11 years old. My mom threw me into public school at 12. What? And I was a girl that wore a skirt, skater shoes and a sweatshirt to school. And I got made fun of so bad. Like, cause we had uniforms before then. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, sure. I got made fun of. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> like, <laughs> be nice. We went to pri- I went to private school from preschool to we graduated the same one. So it's so it's different. All uniforms, yeah. All of a sudden they're like, oh, something about weed, and I'm like, what's that? <laughs> my friend, my friend had to tell me what a pimp was. Like, I'm like, I probably don't need to know what that is when you're 12. But like, no. she was all in the public school systems, and I had no idea what anything meant. So, yeah. But then I got to high school. Um, Why did you have to know what a pimp was? Like, what's yeah. your dad? <laughs> Okay. What's your dad do? He's a pimp. Well, What's a pimp? We were at yeah, Block. Somebody's okay. Kind of like that. okay, going to the story. We were at Blockbuster. I don't know if you guys remember that Blockbuster. Uh-huh. And I saw something that said something pimp. I, we were we were. <laughs> Was that when they had like, the back hidden section? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, pimp, pimp, you know, whatever. And she's like. She had to tell me, I'm like, what's a pimp? Because I think we asked my mom, can we get the pimp movie or whatever? She's like, hell no, you're not getting the pimp movie. And I go, why not? And she goes, because, you know, that's bad. I go, what's a pimp? And then my friend had to tell me. So it was that. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, so I was oh, I, was I wish I could have been there to hear <laughs> your friend explain what a pimp is. All right. All right, Dan. I'm going to tell you what a pimp is. Brace yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. twelve year olds, twelve year olds explanation of pimp. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? Like he wears la- robes and <laughs> he has like, a cane. <laughs> there's a lady sitting next to us looking at the movies, and she's just looking over like, "What is going oh, on?" <laughs> so yeah, you're gonna rent the movie or not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. She picks it up and leaves. Oh, um, that's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, so from there, after the pimp. Uh, <laughs> I went to high school and barely went. I was not the stay in the box kind of a person, like every day sneaking people out of school. One time I told my mom that I had major diarrhea and had to leave. And so she's like, I'll call the office immediately. And I stuck like five people in my car and we left. And so most of the time I didn't go to school. I didn't even know how the heck I graduated. Damn, you say anything. Yeah. Yeah, For real. (laughs) That's a big excuse. Yeah. You could 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 have went with a million other things. You went right to it. Like, mom, it's happening. (laughs) So so, she must be telling the truth. Yeah, right? exactly. Nobody That's else a, would say that. Yeah. <laughs> like, Mom, I feel like I'm going to throw up. I don't care. Go back to school. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know. I, I, I think why I probably graduated is because my parents stuck me in like a side school and paid for that. Plus, I went to school part time. But I, I also would surf a lot. I had a ton of dude friends. I had my girlfriends, but they, they were cool. But I mostly hung out with guys. Like, we would dirt bike and surf and, like, I don't know. I just liked hanging out with guys better. I think guys are cool. <laughs> yeah, they're pimp. <laughs> they're pimp. It's a lot less. <laughs> it's a lot less drama, especially in high school, for Oh, my sure. gosh, yes. Yeah. And I just, I don't know, like, had fun with the dudes more. Like, we'd always do more fun things than – and then it wasn't until I got a little older that I started getting, like, super girly and – super girly now i guess i like i like pink now <laughs> did you have any brothers growing up or i know we're gonna get oh. talk about 
you know, uh, you being in the pool business, but you're probably always around builders and subs oh, and yeah, different yeah. things like that. So I have a brother, but he's eight years younger than me. Um, I was the first born, and I have cousins that are older than me, all boys. And so I think, and I think what happened is my dad, like they didn't know what they were going to have. And so finally I was born and my dad in his head was like, I don't care what she's going to, she's a boy. So like I did, he got us on dirt bikes and all this stuff. So me and my sister learned, like we had no boundaries, which was really cool because now, you know, I can hit up the slopes with my husband or, you know, do all that stuff with the dudes or. You you don't show them up though, do you? Hell yeah. Damn. (laughs) That's messed up. Yeah. Let off the gas a little bit. (laughs) Actually, one of my first dates, not with this husband, not I, not, I had another husband, a boyfriend. Oh, I thought you were going to say, not the not the other one before that, <laughs> the one before that, but... Hey, with the Pam, okay? <laughs> uh, we went on a dirt bike date. That was our first date. And he's like trying to tell me on a dirt bike. And he's like, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to do this. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And he said he looked over and I was in the, in the whoops like... Like going, and he's like, "What the hell?" <laughs> like this, yeah. yeah, exactly. Let me show you how. Yeah. Well, I think every guy truly, like in that age, wants to hang out with those chicks and wants yeah. to date those chicks because, like, you know, you're into if your girlfriend's into like all the girly stuff, you're like, "Yeah, it's cool." But right. if you date a girl that like does like all that, do things, like, yeah. That's, when you're that young and that you're like, "Yeah, heck yeah." yeah. Sorry, at, at that age, I did not want to hang out with. That was my <laughs> that was my time on the slopes and being away. I did not want to bring her along. I'm just saying, like, you know, every guy likes the tom girls, you know, or tomboy, right. and they just want to like chill. Yeah. At least that's what my experience was like maybe not you oh but. like the ice box like yeah a, like because like, like it's fun yeah. okay. and but they secretly they secretly have a crush on them but they're not i'm gonna, gonna find like, a photo of me when i was younger and you guys are gonna go what the hell like <laughs> i'm gonna do that yes let's after do it. this it's pretty <laughs> okay you guys it is we'll no you. i look Don't like worry. a little boy like i was probably six or seven and i like my teeth are like this like <laughs> i need a brace is so bad i have my hair i have dirt all over my, i don't even know it was it was really bad i'll have to show it to you guys but that's fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's not it's not drama. No. So then oh, so then I had a sister and then I had a brother and that's that's my family and uh do you want me to tell Eight you? Eight years that? younger, huh? Yeah. That's a lot. That's yeah. That's a big difference. We it's four and four. So we did my mom was like, Okay, I can deal with you now, maybe. Yeah. And then We did that too. I like the four year gap because I get to experience each stage with, yeah. with, with, each, with each of them. Yeah. It's pretty cool. A lot of people just want to knock knock them all out. But yeah, like me. I've just enjoyed that. Boy yeah. and a girl, twins, get it done. And there then uh, now I've experienced everything and I'm like overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. So were, you know, your dad and all your brother, they were all into extreme sports and stuff like that. Did your dad race or anything? No. So my dad like dirt biking and stuff like that. He's super into cars and super into all that stuff. But I think he just wanted us to experience life like anyone else and not just put us in this girl category. And plus, at the young age when I had older cousins that were a few years older than me, they were always going and doing things. And I was like, I want to be with them. You know, I didn't have any girl cousins to hang out with. So um, that's pretty much, you know, I think why I started out hanging Hanging with the dudes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, being in San Diego, where are you guys dirt biking? Because that's not like, you got to get out of town a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, there's Ocotillo Wells, so we'd go out there um, quite a bit. And um, where I lived growing up, we lived in the back hills of Encinitas. And so we used to be able to, before they built all those houses, we would get on the dirt bikes as little kids. And my parents don't know this, but we would drive forever, <laughs> like all the way to Black Mountain, which is, I want to say that's Poway. It's so far. So, um, and then there was trails and everything, but now there's, you really can't do that, especially this day and age. Right. So, but yeah, that's pretty much what we do. Yeah. And so we know that, you know, you've been around pools most of your life. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so my parents, when my dad was 17, he solicited himself from door to door until he did a offered pool service for free until he built up his own route. Um, my parents were actually neighbors since they were four years old. So, um, they, at 17, my dad's like, Hey, why don't you help me with my books? And, uh, she was going to school. She was like, okay. And then their business continued growing and growing. And then he built routes and sold them and grew it and grew it. And then they ended up starting a warranty station. They actually owned a, um, a pool store in Riverside for a while and then sold that and then just moved to Escondido and moved their way up to San Diego area. They owned a warranty station for several years um, out in Escondido area. Um, And now he just strictly builds pools. 
he sold the other portion off and strictly just as not builds he does more remodel work so did he do all that before you were born or was this when... yeah before i was born okay. oh not remodel so much he did mostly service and repair in the store okay since se- since he was 17 yeah so uh, how how old well, how many years is that oh that gosh is? he's 50 oh sorry no he's not 50 <laughs> he's 60 sorry pops two dad oh. i think 62 <laughs> Man, that's 61. So, he's 61. So My mom's 40 62. something years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's the that's a true way to like yeah. get customers right there. Door yeah, to door yeah. walking. Heck that's yeah. the old school. Dude, like, I've been around this business so long. I know what I know what Orcal is. Do you guys know? Mm-hmm. Remember Orcal? Okay. Yeah. I mean, we we weren't in the industry then, but yeah, I know what it is. Yeah. It's so yeah. So it's been a while. I've been I I can tell you what a heater, pump, filter, motor, all that stuff is. But like I said, don't tell me to work on them because I wouldn't know how. <laughs> My dad's like, can you change that? Well, I'm like, no. Please don't. What, what was that like being around pools when you were young? I mean, did you ever go to job sites or did you ever do anything like that? Yeah. You know, I was actually just thinking about this. I remember one time, I'd go with my dad all the time. And um, sometimes he'd make me stay in the car, but other times I would go with him. And I remember one time he's about to get in the car. He's like, hey, you want to watch me make 500 bucks? And I'm like, yeah, let's go. So go back. <laughs> he opens something up, clip, clip. I don't know what the heck he's doing. He's like, all right, let's go. I'm like, wow. Like, I thought that was so cool. So, I want to make 500 bucks. Yeah, I'm like, cool. oh, my gosh. <laughs> we got more stops to make? Let's do yeah. it. I'll do the next one. I think at a young age, I think this is where my sales started coming in, all this stuff. He's like, okay, Danielle, I'm going to start remodeling pools. Every, you got to start telling people. Every time you get someone to get their pool remodeled, then I will pay, pay you 100 bucks, right? So I'm like, heck, yeah, $100. That's mm-hmm. a lot. So I get... The neighbor, I start going door to door, really. And I used to sell this. Let me go back on another tangent. Uh, I used to go door to door. I'd take stuff out of my mom's closet and sell stuff to the neighbors, <laughs> like <laughs> shoes. One lady one time at a party, we went to a family party years later, and we saw these people, one of our old neighbors. She's like, I remember one time I bought some shoes from you. And I was like, oh, those are my mom's. <laughs> so, Your mom's dude, friends are going to be coming over. Yeah. We're like, where'd you get those shoes? <laughs> I'm missing some of those. Yeah, I was like eight, starting my own business with a wagon. True uh, hustler. But yeah, so then, uh, so yeah, I remember selling this pool basically for my dad. And I, I still, I told him the other day, I'm like, I still have not seen that money. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's He'd be like, awesome. I put you through hair school. There you go. <laughs> you don't even do hair anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you grew up, I mean, so there was like pool trucks in your driveway. There was, I Always, mean, yes. you had you know stuff on the side of your house or, always yeah. always the chlorine cases i mean they yeah. ran their business out of the house for several several years so before they moved it to an office so we had the chlorine cases and then he had the truck with like the pull out stuff and the poles and mm-hmm. um yeah always around and then always the pool guys were around hanging out and our whole family is in the pool industry so all my one of my cousins is in it actually two my aunt on my dad's side um her and her husband are in it so that's his brother on my mom's side, her sister and her brother-in-law are in it. And then Joel Forrester, my cousin. <laughs> Got a shout out, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he has a company as well that he does pools. So my whole family. And then, you know, as you grow in the pool industry, pretty much pool pool guys and gals become your family. Um, if you've known them from the beginning. Yeah, the smell of chlorine, that probably smells like home, huh? Yeah, oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I gotta like that. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. So you went to, after you went to hair school and then college at all? Yeah, so after high school, for some reason I was like, I need to go to college. That's what everyone does when they're to be smart and make money. So I went to be a broadcast journalist. (laughs) There you go. And... it didn't work out. Um, so yeah, it did. Look. <laughs> here I am. My dream comes it. true. Thank you, guys. You're I didn't welcome. need that pimp. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, I ended up getting a pass to Park City because my, my college was in Utah. Got a pass to Park City and snowboarded pretty much every day. I didn't tell my parents, but I secretly sold all my books. The tuition money went towards my house of living and... I was there till the season was over and finally told my parents, I'm like, I got something to tell you. It's weighing on my heart. I'm coming home. The snow's gone. <laughs> 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 but uh, I actually did a quite a few, few things after that. I was an orthodontist assistant. I was a nanny, a couple other things in between. And then I'm like, what the heck am I going to do? So 
I was 18, I think, 18 or 19, started doing hair, uh, went to hair school. And while I was doing hair, or was in hair school, I got an opportunity to go work for Swimming Pool Association that offered insurance and um, make sales. And I was freaking killing it. I was doing really, really well. So on the days that I wasn't in hair school, I was doing that. So I was doing it back and forth. And then I finally started doing hair at a full-time salon. And then I was kind of doing the two job things. So I was doing sales on the side, doing the shows, also doing hair. And then eventually I was like, screw these PMS biatches uh, and go <laughs> straight to hang out with cool guys and gals in the pool industry. So that's where I started doing insurance. And I did that for several years. And eventually, I uh, wanted to start my own business. I just saw a different policies out there. And I wanted to, I don't know, I just wanted to offer something better and more. So I decided at that time, I was going to start my own company. And it was extremely hard. Like, this was the hardest thing I've ever done. And it was wake up in the morning till 11, 12 o'clock at night, researching and all this stuff. And finally, with my connections in the insurance industry from before, I finally got an opportunity to talk to a very large insurance company and in San Diego. It was really scary. And I sat there with all these businessmen overlooking the San Diego Harbor. It was a crazy moment and they liked me and I feel like I sold them on my passion for the industry and I sold them on what I can offer to the pool professionals and I sold them you know I feel like I was like I can get sales I can start from square one I can get sales I can make this happen they believed in me so we started our journey for the insurance company and I remember looking at my husband going I have two sales and I'm never gonna get there I'm never gonna get there and it, and it ended up you know, slowly one by one by one, we started um, giving a great product and it started selling itself, basically. You know, you probably always secretly wanted to be your own boss and have your own business because, you know, you're talking about when you were a little kid, you mm -hmm. were selling things door to door and just watching your dad make a quick, you know, 500 bucks yep. and, you know, just being kind of the, the rebellious kid during the college years yeah. and just kind of doing your own thing. Those are, you know, some of the ingredients of being an entrepreneur yeah. um, where you're just kind of like waiting for that right challenge to want to do something. Yeah. And it looks like you, you found it. Yeah. I think with having being in the industry for so long goes hand in hand with the insurance part and, you know, combining it together. Like you said, the ingredients, it's with my passion and everything because I want to protect the pool professionals. I Every year for my for the alliance, I go up and I fight for the pool professionals. So, if I want to add in coverage, or if I, I'll listen to the the insureds and they'll say, "Hey, Danielle, what about this?" or "Let's add another fifty thousand of pool pop up coverage," and I'm like, "Heck yeah, let's do it." So I'll go to the underwriters and I'll negotiate until we get what we want, or you know, certain things that I don't want in the policy that I know that you know we don't want those certain claims. But I think yeah, with my passion for the pool industry is with it's like family to me so and I think people see that like if they meet me in person at a show or whatever that most of the time they don't think I'm the owner um they're like so where's the owner <laughs> right here but why is that <laughs> why why do you think they don't see you as an owner probably because I'm a chick yeah. well, I think I think that's probably a part of it for sure you know in the insurance yeah. in industry like you said you're up in a room full of guys it's kind of yeah that's kind of the Way, I mean, most way people of, understand and look at that, yeah. right? I mean. Yeah. I, I think that, I don't know. It's just that the, most of the time when people own businesses and stuff like that, it's really, it really is ran by a guy or a man. My husband, I mean, my husband owns a business. My dad owns his business with my mom, but he's the front lines of it. And usually it's like, oh, do you, you and your husband own it? Or, you know, so that's the. Uh, so what's that been like for you? It's been, well, it's been, it's been great. Like I love pool guys and gals, the girls, man, they are freaking rad because there's not many of them out there, but they are freaking awesome. I don't know. I think it's been hard because I, I get a lot of like, I don't know, just, I don't know, should I say that? Like disgusting guys sometimes. Like, yeah, for sure. you know, they're just rude and obnoxious and, you know, like I'm, I'll do pool and spa shows and not pool and spa shows, but we'll do like tabletops and stuff like that. And, you know, I've had little comments of like oh you're here to do a tabletop uh, you know like you know stupid stuff like that this is i don't know if you want to yeah, hear this but <laughs> yeah well but this yeah. is this is real stuff and uh, everybody should be treated with respect yeah all the time yeah no matter what 
So, but yeah, I mean, that stuff happens, but it happens to every, I'm sure a lot of people, but, um, and then of course, like, I don't think people, I, just being a competitor in the industry is really big for me too. So being a girl and a competitor and trying to offer the best I can offer for the pool professionals, um, I'm still dealing with people who kind of see black and white. They don't see any gray area. And so I get a lot of people who talk shit and are rude and have made me cry before. But, you know, I grew a thicker skin and here I am today and I'm still going to rise. I'm going to rise. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you're kind of pioneering the way um, a bit because I think the pool industry in general, it's pretty much been like a, a male dominant sort of industry. It doesn't matter if it's insurance or building yeah. or whatever it may be, but there's a lot of women coming into the space or have been here, but they're doing just as good a job. And oh, heck yeah. at the end of the day, it's just whatever needs to be done. Whoever the best person is for the job does it. That's right. all there is to it. It's either going to be a woman or it's going to be a guy. Who, yeah. Who does it better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's all there is. And, to it. and don't get me wrong. That doesn't happen a ton of times, but it has happened. So, you know, most 99.9% .9 of the time, everyone's just as cool as you guys. Right. It's just like hanging out with the dudes. So, but it, it does happen, and I'm sure everyone else has been in that situation as a woman. So, yeah, it's good to talk about. It's good to, I think it's definitely better now than it ever has oh, been. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully that, that'll keep continuing to go. Yeah. I think a good thing for people listening to this, like I said, is treating people with respect. But, you know, we've all heard it before like, treat these people like you treat your mother, or your wife, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like the women you see in the industry might be somebody's wife or they might be somebody's mother or something like that and no matter what make them feel comfortable because yeah. imagine if you were in their shoes you know this is really coming to the surface of lately um, there's a lot of documentaries and there's a lot of things from these really big companies where there's been these cases coming up mm -hmm. and people are like well why didn't something happen it's like well if you watch any of these documentaries a lot of times it's because there's somebody in such big power that is controlling these people mm -hmm. it's like you're going to do what i tell you mm -hmm. or you're not getting paid what you're getting paid right now and you're never going to work anywhere and then if you say anything da, 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 da. so you know when it comes to feeding your family and all these different things hey there's some stuff that you might bury down yeah our passion to seek pool industry knowledge and being able to share that knowledge with you is the reason we started pool chasers Turns out Pentair has several ways for you to gain knowledge as well. Take, for example, the Pentair Master Service Program. This is a program designed to recognize dealers, service technicians, and other pool professionals for completing desired training modules. It gives you the tools you can use to troubleshoot Pentair installations in the field and become a master of Pentair product knowledge. Be rewarded for educational activities designed to enhance your Pentair knowledge as you move through the certification levels. With three levels to work through, becoming a certified Pentair professional has never been easier. It's training that rewards you and your business. But the real value comes from building your confidence in the field to ensure the customer loyalty you need to keep your business growing. We encourage you to check this out. So to become a certified Pentair professional today, visit PentairPartners.com or click the link in the write-up below. So you kind of you started your own like brokerage or agency too, right? Yeah. So um, a few years ago, I was an insurance agent and I was going through a company who I thought was a brokerage company. And then you go from a brokerage company to your underwriters. Um, and the whole time he was taking a big cut of the money. And he kept telling me, like, like, he made me feel like I was, even though I was an agent, he was taking advantage of me because I, as an agent broker, all I had to do was do a couple of things to start bar insurance agency and all that percentage money comes back. So he really took advantage, this, this agent at the time took advantage of just me. I mean, I was a young business person and just took advantage of my, what do you call it? Your inexperience. Inexperience, yeah. So when it came down to it and I found, I started educating myself. I went to school and this time really listened to what they're saying and took some insurance classes and I realized like, hey, I can start my own brokerage firm and I can offer everything in-house. And guess what? That percentage of money that's been going to him all these years is going to go to me in my pocket to expand the business and make it a better business. So I was so upset and I called him up and basically did a, you know, everything in writing, Called actually called up the underwriters 
and we had a meeting and I said, what the heck is going on? They're like, we didn't know you owned your own broker. We didn't know you were a broker. We had no idea or else we just thought you were this. And I'm like, what? No, I'm not just a salesperson. Like, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So immediately basically cut that guy off and started bar insurance agency. And we do everything in house now. So certificates of insurance, everything that certificates are in house, um, basically the brokerage firm, everything goes through the brokerage firm. So it's brokered to Swimming Pool Pro Alliance. Nice. So can you explain to us what general liability insurance is? Yeah. So this is the definition of commercial general li liability insurance. It's commercial general liability insurance is a broad type of insurance policy, which provides liability insurance for general business risks. Commercial general liability is the specific name for the policy of this type in the United States insurance market. So basically protects the owner of a pool company or a company from specific things that can happen. Right. And what are, you know, being, you know, a pool service company, what are some things that can happen that it would Ooh. it would cover? Yeah, I've seen it all. Let's talk about the dog incident. So one of the professionals went in a backyard, the dog got out, there was a lady walking her dog, and the dog bit her and she had to get stitches and everything. So that's something that's covered under the general liability insurance policy. We've had pool overflow. So a lot of Pool professionals don't leave their keys on the spigot. They take off, and the next day they get a call. The homeowners are out of town, and they get back home, and the whole downstairs living room of their house is completely flooded. That's when we've had issues with the, I think we had an electrical fire from a heater before. Something was installed, which then caused an electrical fire and burned down the side of the house structure. What else? Pool pop-ups. They're not so much here in you know Arizona or California. Um, they happen more in Florida, but pool pop-ups happen quite often. It's usually, it's due to water table issues. So if you drain a pool and there's a water table is high, then it's going to pop the pool out of the ground. And we've had several of those in Florida. And they, they really actually, a lot of people from Florida look for that sort of coverage because that does happen so much. So if they're going to do an acid wash, it's kind of a scary thing for them because they're like, oh my gosh, it probably can happen today. Right. And having this insurance is maybe protecting a business owner because as a business owner, we have our assets internally. Mm -hmm. We have personal assets and things like that. Is that protecting, um, say, the homeowner from taking, you know, the things that we own? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to protect you in the event you were to jack someone's stuff up. It's going to protect you. Um, so that they're not going to go after your assets. So if you own a home or if you own a car or if you you have money in the bank, there could be a judgment against you if, uh, if you, they get a lawyer and, you know, let's say something happens to their pool where it's going to cost them to redo their whole entire pool. Um, that can go up to it's, it's a pool pop-up, $100,000. So not many people have $100,000 sitting in their account just to give to someone for no reason. This will protect them and it'll cover that sort of issue. And do you need a certain type of business to do this? Like if you have an LLC or, you know, any one of these different, if, depending on how you have it set up, does it matter? No, um, we, you can be insured just as a Joe Schmo. It can just be you. Um, like as a sole proprietor? Sole proprietor, that's fine. I always recommend, I'm not, you know, I'm not a lawyer or anything, but I recommend it's always good just to have an LLC or a corporation. It just double protects you, but to have general liability insurance to also help with protecting you. Right. Because the, the insurance is actually going to take care of it. Whereas just having an LLC is just, it's limited liability. So it's just going to help you protect you from people taking those things. They can right. take stuff from the business, from the but business, not, yeah. right. you know, your, your personal um, assets. Right. But having I mean, the insurance, like a general uh, commercial liability yeah. is actually going to like pay for it. Yeah. And it could be something you don't even do. Let's just say someone drowns. God forbid someone drowns. A little kid gets in a backyard. Everyone's going to be pulled into that claim. The homeowner's insurance your insurance, the pool, the pool professional's insurance, the lawn care guy's insurance. Everyone will be pulling up in that claim because those sorts of claims, they go up to millions of dollars for child drowning. And it could not even been that you left that gate open. You were just there two days prior. So so what sense. happens during a, a drowning case? Like, I mean, what is the claim against? Is it, I'm assuming it's going to be, 
they have to prove that maybe the service company left either a gate open or, or something like that? Not even that. I mean, if the guy was there just cleaning that day, I mean, it just, they pull, it's, from there it becomes more insurance lawyer involved. It had nothing to do with the guy, really. It becomes insurance lawyer and, and the lawyer's just trying to get money from everyone at that point. So, so um, wow, you could be taking care of this pool and you did what you were supposed to mm-hmm. and you can very well just get hit with this. Yep. It happens a lot. Yeah. I mean, child drownings happen, do happen a lot, but this can definitely cause, if you didn't have insurance, then what? Then you're going to be, I mean, what do they do? Yeah. Does the amount that a company would pay for insurance, does that go up if they're filing like lots of claims? It can. This is where I look at it because I'm trying to keep the integrity of SPPA. So if Some guy has two or three claims or even one that's really big. I may not allow them to stay with us anymore because I feel that they may be too much of a risk to keep the integrity of SPPA. But if it's, you know, usually I have several people who have had claims. They're still insured with us. Um, Some rates have gone up. Some have not. Just depends. Um, I try to keep them down. Well, that's that's how all insurance works. I mean, you get in two or three car accidents, your car insurance is up. Right. You get a right. drunk driving ticket, your car insurance goes up. And right. it's just how insurance works. But yeah, I mean, like you said, if you're fighting to keep it keep it down, you know, yeah. do what you can to help them. Yeah. I haven't changed my rates for our company in the last seven years. So Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about what the general liability insurance does not cover, just so people have an idea of what to avoid. Yeah. So For my particular alliance, we do not cover construction or remodel of any kind. We do not cover draining vinyl liner pools or fiberglass pools. The reason why is I think most pool professionals should know this, but if you do drain them, they will cave in on themselves. And that right there to me is a, you just know it's going to be a claim. Yeah. Um, That's very understandable. Like you should know not to do that. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that, which is you know, scary. But the other thing is animal or fish mortality. So that means if you're going to go put chlorine in someone's koi pond and kill their $7,000 fish times 20 fish, we're not going to pay for that. Or if you kill their chicken, because this has happened before, chicken got out, the dog got it, killed it, and they came after him. And he's like, well, uh, I'm like, we don't cover that. We don't cover chickens. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Um, so animal or fish mortality. But like I said, if the dog gets out and bites a person because you left the gate open, that will be covered. Um, the other thing we don't cover is uh, install. We You can install a diving board and you can install a, uh, a slide, but we don't cover bodily injury that arises out of that. So if you were installing a diving board or a, or a slide and caused damage on the property, that'll be covered. But if someone's sliding down on that slide because you installed it improperly and they were to get hurt, there's no coverage for that. Um, many of many insurance policies in this industry don't cover the sorts of bodily injury for that. Right. And would you think it'd be a good idea if you took on a new account or you just built a pool and you just felt a little uneasy because maybe they do have some chickens or they do have something going on to maybe contact, you know, if they're using you um, as their insurance company to call you and say, Hey, this is what I'm looking at. You know, they've got chickens and they've got a diving pool and this is kind of what the situation looks like. You know, what, you know, what are, what should I be aware of? You know, yeah, I have a lot of actually people call me all the time to, and I, I love that. I love when people I think call that's me a good up. Idea. Yeah, it's great. And I tell people, call me up if you have a question about something, or if you're looking at the pool that's 20 years old and you're about to drain it and do an acid wash, I'm going to say, yeah, most likely there's going to be some issues with that pool as soon as you drain it. There's cracking, shrinking, all those specific things that can happen. So we offer a pool draining release form. So you give that to your customer, and oh, from nice. there, they, and it just, Because there are a lot of people out there, you know, insurance is to help you in the event something were to happen. But there's also people out there to get a new pool, to get a new backyard, to get different things. And so in the end, the insurance is here to take care of the claims department. They'll take care of all of those issues for you. Yeah, there's definitely those people out there. (laughs) They're looking for for that opportunity. And yeah, I mean, the drain waiver is awesome. We had one just because... 
of an issue that we have with somebody and they're like that's not going to happen ever again you know so we, we can't take that risk but it's really good to let them know to have that conversation with the customer so they even understand that that's a possibility yeah because a lot of homeowners don't have any idea if you don't explain it to them right like you know they may just say yeah never mind i don't want to do that right you know my pool's too old or whatever at least if they're signing it they have you know i mean you go through court that's going to be a whole nother thing but at least it's a some somewhat a protection that and they are aware for sure that it's a possibility and to go hand in hand with that i think it's really beneficial to take pictures keep logs um mm-hmm. always keep something that you can always fall back on just to double protect yourself because we're you know in the end the insurance is going to be there for you but still you want to like hey guys i was not even there or i had this or i wasn't i didn't create this issue i took a picture after i left that pool that day yeah, before and afters are huge. Mm-hmm. Take, if you see anything sketchy, like you should definitely take pictures before. Yeah, and an after, let you know that you were there and, and the job was done. And always do it because it seems like yeah. the time <laughs> you don't. If just that happens. one time you decide not to do it, it seems like that's the time where you need it. Yeah. Yep. So it's like if you get burnt out from doing it, just just keep doing it because the the troubles you're gonna have yeah. when something goes wrong and you didn't document it. Yep. You're gonna be screwed. We've we've all yep. been there before. Oh, we're yeah. like, oh well, we got pictures, man, because that's what we do. Right. And you go in there and be like, dude, why isn't there shit in here? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> what the heck? Are you kidding me? The so, kids deleted it. <laughs> you listen to that. You know, listen to that inner voice too. You, know, you can always tell, like when you're talking to a customer, you're like, this person, oh, this person's sure. not. You know, you gotta if you if you feel that, like, go above and beyond with the picture taking. Yeah. And protecting yourself. You know, you can. You've had enough interaction with people and customers that you know which ones are a little sketch. I've seen it happen. I've seen a guy, um, he told me, he's like, oh, yeah, I need a certificate of insurance today. I'm going to start doing the pool today. And everything was documented from the homeowner's home all the way till something. They He had cameras and all this stuff, and and there was, like, a little crack in the pool, and it was blamed on the pool professional when it, it wasn't his fault. But because somehow he blamed it all on the guy. But, yeah, this stuff happens. I'll yeah. put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I think you said it, you know, the other day when we were talking, like what what not what's not covered is really good to know and talk about with your team. You know, you mentioned that the other day just because oh, yeah. you can really go above and beyond and let, hey, guys, like, you know, let's pay attention to this. You're going to do this job. Like if this happens, it's not going to be covered. So make sure you're going above and beyond to make sure those things, you know, are not happening. I think that was a cool comment you made the other day. So. That's what we tried to do with our team, you know, on specific jobs. Yeah, especially if you're hiring employees quite a bit. Because in this industry, we see employees come on and off all the time. They're just, you know, for the season or not for the season, or they don't work out one week or they don't show up to work or whatever. But it's always good to keep maybe once a week have a meeting saying, hey, guys, just by the way. Or even a little printout saying, hey, we don't cover this sort of things. Don't do it. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Have you ever seen a claim on like a water bill or something like that where they had a leak and it wasn't like they didn't catch it where there's nothing. It didn't hurt the house or anything, but they're getting like a a water bill that might be a thousand dollars because there's a leak underground and maybe just the autofill is running 24 seven and they're just getting hit with a huge bill and maybe they're letting it accumulate so that they can file a claim Mm -hmm. or something like (laughs) that. I'm just curious because There's people that would come to us and be like, our bill's been X amount for six months. And I'm like, why don't you tell us the first month? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Seems a little irregular, (laughs) but is that claim worthy? um, We had a recent claim like that. And a customer called and said to to one of the pool professionals and said, hey, um, my water bill is ridiculous. You left the water on. Well, he did leave the water on. Thankfully, it didn't ruin her house, but he left it on. And he left it on. I'm like a thousand dollars worth i'm not sure if that's what she said so for a couple i go how long he's well a couple days or a day i think it was i'm like well okay i'm not sure if it would be a thousand dollars but you know from there it goes to the claims department they handle it right well it can definitely happen if you have an underground leak you know on the return side and the and in the like pipe and the pool's running and pouring out water i mean that can definitely it can rack up a bill quick for, but oh, is that yeah. something that you would notice as a pool professional you probably should notice the, yeah. the water dropping that rapidly. Oh, the water. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, because, yeah. I mean, if it's running and that water is going to be dropping quick. I see. Yeah, you know, yeah. and so every you time you go, you're having that. to put the hose in, then you know that there's a leak somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that should be – you should know a little bit. But other than that, I mean, your autofill not be causing thousands of dollars in right. bills. But, I mean, it can 
it's it's definitely a thing though. I mean, we had people tell us all the time, "You need to pay me a hundred bucks or whatever." I'm like, what on. would you do? Would you pay him? Sometimes. Oh my I goodness. mean, it's better than going on, through shit. Right. It's better than going through. <laughs> it's not my fault. You're stupid. Right. You should have said something. something. Yeah. yeah. I think there was one bucks. or two. I think there was one or two times. Because if an autofill is running, did, but... I'm there for thirty yeah, minutes. How the hell do I know that? Yeah, yeah. I get it. So I don't sit. You don't you pay know. me to sit by your pool twenty four hours a day and watch if this <laughs> autofill is on all damn day. But you know, like because sometimes... there's a lot of homeowners that think that you really do sit by the pool all fucking day. Yeah, yeah. they do. Like, yeah. like you're playing lifeguard. Nobody's in the pool. You're just watching it. <laughs> Ooh, Doing leave. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, you it's it is easier no, I, sometimes to just pay that hundred bucks than go through the whole. He, yeah, for sure. He said, she said, dance of you know because you don't really know what your employee did. And then at and that then point, like, get rid of them. Be like, yeah, okay, you're gonna get rid of them Alicia. anyways. Yeah, here's your hundred bucks. <laughs> see you later. Like you know, it's it's much better to just cut ties. But so if you were a pool service company, you were an owner, you just got general liability insurance, and you were gonna speak to your team of five or ten and just explain to them that we do have this. Here's what to be aware of. Like, what would that speech look like? Well, first of all, I think as a as a owner of a pool company, I would make sure whoever is hiring that I'd be training them, you know, for a good amount of time before they went out on their own. And then specifically, it would just be the the immediate exclusions. Like I said, would be, you know, the diving board thing. And and, and usually the employees aren't doing that anyways. Uh, probably the biggest one would be over chemicalization. So. If they're employees, and it's usually the employees that these claims do come from, if they are trained improperly, then at that point, these are the claims that can, can happen. So I think as an owner, I would train them first off so this wouldn't happen. And if uh, if not, explain to them, you know, this is, this is the sort of thing that you need to look for. So when it comes to chemicals, you know, that's really important is make sure that you are testing every visit and you are inputting that data from the test into the CRM or whatever you're yeah. using so we have documentation. Because I think this is the key part is if you don't, these are this is what can happen. It's, yeah. The pool can cause etching. Um, it can do all these types of things to the actual like interior finish of the pool. Mm -hmm. And that's what somebody can make a claim on. Yeah. And if that happens, you know, that's huge for our business. But if you're not doing your due diligence on that, you're very well, you might not be able to make a claim on that. Is that what you're saying? No, you, you can definitely, uh, claims are going to come through no matter what. I just, I like to tell people that just make sure people are trained correctly. Um, make sure, like you said, logging stuff and doing, you know, when you're doing a chemicals, make sure that, you, like you said, put it in a, what is it, is CSR? CRM. CRM, yeah. Uh, there's plenty of programs out there that offer that. So, and especially in a claim, let's just say it's something they did over the weekend and you weren't there and they decided to add pool chlorine because their kids been they're peeing in the pool all day. So what if it's something that they did and caused an issue on the side or I don't know, acid, who knows? And they blame you. Well, you are like, no, look at this is beautiful pool. I've been taking care of it the last couple of months and look at all of my data. So, yep. yep. So I would say, you know, things to avoid if, if it's not pool related, stay away from it. All fences getting in and out of the pool, make sure they're closed, they're yes. shut. Um, anything besides a pool, leave it alone because you're talking about dogs and chickens and all these different things. Anything that doesn't have to do with the pool, make sure that you're not touching it, doing yep. anything with it, or you're protecting it, which is making sure things are shut and closed. Right. Because it seems like those are the things that can be a little yeah. bit wonky. Even those automatic pool um, covers. Covers, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I, personally, I would say, I would call up the homeowner and be like, hey, come on this day. Do you think you could open it for me? Not, I'm not saying that's not going to be covered because we've covered certain things when someone's jacked up someone's pool cover before. But I would say that let's, you know, let's make things less claims. Yeah. Right. We're talking about doing your due diligence. Exactly. And like making sure that you don't have to file one. You know, that's the whole point. Yeah, but also like what to really avoid yeah. the stuff that won't be covered. Mm -hmm. So it's like we have insurance, but if you do this, like we're we're screwed because yeah. the liability insurance doesn't cover that. Right? Yeah. And you were recently talking about too that uh, somebody had a pole go through a window. Yeah. I would have to think that that's pretty common because you know you can all attest <laughs> to this that we've all been in we've backyards where it's well they're really tight spaces yeah. where the pools. I mean mm -hmm. I can't believe a pole hasn't gone through my window. 
right yeah. like it's like like two feet away from the yeah. pool's like two feet away from the window yeah do you guys get yeah. that a lot yeah we've had that a couple times um another one was the guy you know what's that thing called that goes in the hitch of the truck holds all the pool equipment the pool the buggy yeah whatever that thing is like, yeah, like riptide bag yeah boom ran it right into someone's garage and that how to replace a garage these are oh. all the things that can happen you know how there's a million things that can happen yeah right? <laughs> yep Primate Pool Tools are the creators of the first carbon fiber poles in the industry. They use aerospace-grade carbon fiber that makes them five times stronger than aluminum, which allows you to cut through water with ease. They have options for residential and commercial service and offer three models of poles as well as an extension system that can extend your reach up to 40 feet. Not only that, but they are made here in the USA, come with a one-year commercial warranty, and you get access to their top-notch customer service. Primate is excited to announce that they will be releasing custom Primate poles. Stand out from the crowd by grabbing a limited edition pole with original art designed by the Primate team. They're coming soon to Primate Web Store at PrimatePoolTools.net. And when you place your order, don't forget to use Pool Chasers 10 at checkout for $10 off. To find out more, check out episode 104 of the podcast or click the link below. Somebody backs up, hits a garage. I got to think that that could be... That can happen to anybody. What happens at that point? So somebody that has general liability, what's their first move? So let me go over that story again. So what had happened is it had fallen off the truck and then hit the garage. That is what happened. Not the truck hit it. I think that's what it had fallen off the truck and hit the garage. So that's oh, why shit. it was covered. Um, if that buggy had not fallen off, if that person had hit the garage with their car, then that's something that's going to be covered under their commercial auto policy. Oh, but this is right. what had happened. That's why it came off, burnt, hit the thing, and that was the coverage for that. In that case, um, it falls off, hits the garage. Obviously, somebody's going to have to pay for a new garage door. What does the pool service... The claims process look like? Yeah, what, what? who do you call first? Like Maybe you could just step us through that process. Usually, they'll call our office. They'll call the office and... Or me. And we're like, oh, my gosh, I just did this. I'm like, oh, my gosh, why? Uh, but then from there, we have a claims form. There's a $500 deductible fee. And once we receive that fee, then it goes to the claims department. There's a form that's filled out that goes to the claims department, and they handle everything from there. It's a very seamless, easy process. It'll be assigned to an adjuster and uh, a claims adjuster, and they'll take care of everything with talking to your homeowner, talking to you, going back and forth. Once in a while, I'll get involved if they're like, hey, I haven't heard from them in a couple of days or whatever, or an email got misplaced. But other than that, it's been very, very easy every single uh, claim that we've had. Right. And so do you coach them up at all? Say if you're there and you're saying, hey, are you did this just happen? Like make sure that you're taking all the photos, you're doing everything because you don't want like a crime scene or something. You don't mm -hmm. want somebody to come in and start you know, messing with stuff. Right. So is that a good practice? Whereas like as soon as something happens, like document, photos, yeah. yeah, video, whatever you can do, like yeah. document it ASAP. Immediate photos, um, emails, whatever is going on at that time. I always say put the claim in right away, even before the restoration company has to come if it's a flood. Put the claim in right away so that they can figure out if this is going to be something that could have, I mean, sometimes they call the pool guy immediately or gal and say, you flooded my pool. And it was not an issue that the pool, that it would have never even turned on the water. It was the kid playing in the backyard. So I always say, put the claim in right away and then the adjusters go from there and they will contact the homeowners. And if it has, it could be a homeowner claim. Mm -hmm. But yes, pictures are huge. Okay. Documentation. And what should people be looking for in an insurance policy? A-rated insurance, that's how financially secure the underwriters are. Um, you want to make sure you have that. Certificates of insurance, that those are done within a timely manner, within 24 hours, I like to say. I think there's a lot of people, and this is something I learned just being in the pool industry with my parents, is that they're doing a commercial account. They need the certificate and that for them to get paid. So if they're not getting that right away, then they're holding on to their money until they get paid. Or to even, let's just say they wanted to start doing a Hilton. Hilton, you have to show them your vendor packet and have to have a certificate of insurance listing them as additionally insured prior to even starting work with them. So that's a another thing. Just basically proof of insurance, right? Exactly. And they require like the documentation certificate. of it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Shows all the limits of insurance that they have and everything. Yeah. You know, 
Another thing is um, the shared aggregate limit. So there are people or associations and different things out there like that that uh, share their aggregate limit of insurance. An aggregate limit is the amount you have for the year. So let's just say it's a $3 million aggregate, $1 million per occurrence. That $3 million could be shared with a whole group. So let's just say there's 5,000 members of this group. That $3 million is shared once it's – let's just three people get a claim at a $1 million each, it's gone. That's one thing that you – you know, when you're looking at your policy, say you want your own member limits, your own policy limits per insured limits. Customizable policy. Customizable policy. That's big. A lot of the times, you know, you could be just getting into the business, retiring. You want you can start out with lower limits and go all the way up to higher limits if you need them. A lot of there are uh, commercial accounts requiring excess liability. And for instance, in my program, we have the platinum program, which is a four million dollar aggregate, two million per occurrence. And in many times, this excess liability that's needed before you'd have to go outside of that coverage to get that. And it could be $1,800 per million that you need. So with our platinum program, most of the time, I would say 99.9% of the time, this platinum program, the $4 million works for the excess liability. Rarely comes up or some people just want the more coverage. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is customer service. I think that's huge. This day and age, I mean... People don't, like, we're sitting here right now talking to each other. I mean, you don't do that anymore. It's like texting or, you know, I, I feel like no one really gets that one-on-one -on -one anymore. Or they, uh, for me, I like to answer the phone like, hey, hey, Jim, how are you? And they are like, oh, you remember me, you know? And and I can guarantee in my company, Ashley, who runs the office, she's always answering. And if you don't pay your bill, she's going to text you and email you and call you and, you know, <laughs> and yeah. everything. Um, but you feel more... I think to feel more like a person than a number is huge. Yeah. I think that would be nice, you know, dealing with somebody that is pool industry specific and have a small team, but you take care of just the pool industry so that, you know, you're not getting some where you like press a number for a department yep. and you're on the phone for, <laughs> yeah, yeah, on, like for a half hour. <laughs> but that's, that's a, that's nice to be able to have yeah. that. Yeah. I, I, that I hate that. I, ha I hate calling and you're just sitting online forever and then you're like, what? Help me. <laughs> right. What about repair tech only? Like if you just are only doing repairs? That's fine. That's not really under it, – it could not be covered under other policies, right? Yeah, there's there could be some policies out there. You just want to check with your policy or, or with your insurance that do you – do they cover 100% repair work? So if you're doing pumps, heaters, filters, motors, you have a warranty station. That's all you strictly do. You want to make sure that that's covered, that it's not that they require a certain percentage of service versus repair. Yeah. Yeah. And it says like pool specific. Is there like maybe insurance companies that don't really have enough experience in the pool industry? Um, I don't know if it's just that, but I think that you want to have a customized policy for your needs. So if you're doing, oh, okay. you know, you're servicing pools, you want to make sure that you're being covered for pool pop-ups, pool overflows, leak, key and lock replacement. So let's just say you're doing a huge apartment complex and you lose their keys. They're going to have to rekey that whole place. Things that pertain to the pool industry. Now, if I'm going to go over to Farmers and I'm going to get myself a policy and it's 75 bucks a month, there could be things in there that I don't need. It's something for – it's a more broad policy based on what the specific coverage is that you don't need or you may not have the coverage that you need inside of it. So. What about what about hazmat? Because I think, you know, or pool cleanup because that's a big one that I think Greg and I didn't really know for years. Uh, you know, that it's so expensive yeah. to cover that if somebody gets in an accident like on a major road or, you know, or even just on a driveway. There's, yeah. there's a big – Big uh, bill for that. Somebody's got to pay it. <laughs> As a pool professional, it's really important to make sure you do have that coverage because you're carrying around chemicals every day. That's your job. You go from pool to pool and you put chemicals in pools. So it's you're driving down the road, something happens, you're on the freeway, you get in an accident. Most, well, 100% hazmat's going to come out and then you're going to get this beautiful bill in the mail. So you want to make sure you do have hazmat coverage as a pool professional. And our policy, for example, we have has much coverage built in. So they're going to, let's just say um, you get in an accident, your auto will pick up so much. And if they don't pick up the whole thing, then we'll add an additional 15000 Nice. And does that cover like fires from chemicals too? So we had someone, uh, there was a, the chemical spill had created a fire, which then hazmat has to come out as well. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, that does cover that. But it's in certain cases, there is a fine line between auto and that. You may want to check into your auto and see if they also offer that sort of coverage. Sure. Yeah. Cool. What about the, you know, is a warehouse included in that too or your your place or So whatever your store? So if you have a storefront or warehouse or office and you want to cover it liability-wise, so let's just say someone walks in, trips, falls, breaks their leg, hits their head or whatever, you would like to have – Jet, it's liability only. So it's not going to cover the products and everything inside your place. It's just going to cover liability only if bodily injury or property damage. Let's say a fire catches in your your warehouse and burns down the unit next door. So that's the sort of coverage that that would cover. Cool. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> and what kind of plans do you offer at SPPA? So we have three separate plans. The first plan is our silver program, and that's a $2 million aggregate, $1 million per occurrence. It means you have $2 million for the year, $1 million per occurrence. Um, within that program, there is a $100 annual fee that you have to pay. Also, certificates of insurance are $25 per certificate we do charge. Um, and then that price is $59 a month for the primary member and $39 extra per additional employee. Um, so that package, would that be maybe for – one person by himself or a smaller type yeah, company? Yeah, if you're not doing commercial accounts, I always recommend that to that because um, if you're doing, you need five or six certificates, right there is another 100 bucks that you're paying. Might as well get free certificates and jump up to our gold program. <laughs> so the gold program is a $3 million aggregate, $1 million per occurrence, 69 bucks a month, um, $49 per additional employee. You got to, uh, I think I said $3 million aggregate. Yeah, $1 million mm -hmm. per occurrence. Um, and the free certificates, no annual fees part of that one. So you're just paying strictly uh, the 69 bucks a month. And then we go up to your higher program of the, the platinum, and that is uh, 89 bucks a month and 69 per employee, and that is uh, $4 million aggregate, $2 million per occurrence, free certificates of insurance, um, no annual fees in that as well. Um, and then the silver program, we do not cover people who do 100% repair work in the silver program. So if you – if you know, it's just that's what yeah. we don't cover that in there. Yeah. So, what would be a deciding factor between like gold and platinum? What I mean, where do you see kind of people falling under that? I see more uh, new new guys getting into that that because they're just kind of getting in the industry and they don't want to spend a ton of money. They don't know if they're going to be getting into commercial accounts, so they'll start in that silver program. Also, I have retirees, people that are getting out of the business that they're going to be in that silver program. If you're going to be doing commercial accounts or if you just want a little extra coverage, I mean, $3 million aggregate, $1 million per occurrence, free certs, um, and uh, that's really the middle of the road. The gold program is the most preferred, but we do get quite a people that just want the additional coverage in the platinum program. And what are the what are the million dollar occurrence? What does that mean exactly? Oh, sorry about that. So the a million dollar per occurrence is per claim. So you have up to a million dollars per claim. So for your three million, um, you have one, you'll get personally one million per incident. Okay, and there's usually a deductible that has to be paid. Yep, five hundred. Right up. Doesn't front. matter what it is. Nope, on all three programs, five hundred. Very good. And you can be on the silver program and say it's just you as a. Sole proprietor, you're uh, one one polar just cleaning your own pools. But if you decide to take on you know another team member or something, can you still s stay on that plan and pay for them to be on it as well? Or are you going to get bumped up into a d another? No, you plan? can stay if you're like, hey, I've got five employees and I'm on the silver program. You can stay in that silver program. But if you you can always upgrade. I mean, you can call them and upgrade that day. We just need something a little quick email text message that says, hey. I'm adding this employee and I'm going to upgrade today and we'll go ahead and upgrade you. Yeah. It's probably good, you know, for them to check in with you and let you know where your business is at and the type of work that you're taking on so that maybe you might have some suggestions. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, we're thinking about getting into commercial. It's like, well, if you do, you know, make sure that maybe we might move into another plan because you might be doing bigger jobs, making more money, but you also have more risk. Right. And when you have more risk, you need, you know, something to, to protect yeah. you and the team. Or, you know, some people have called me before and said, hey, I'm just going to start building pools. And I go, you know what? This is not the plan for you. This, right. Mm -hmm. Let's get you somewhere else. Let's get you with another agent. Let's get you another policy that's going to protect you in the event something to happen if you're building a pool. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. I think the deductible thing, you know, that's a good 
thing to know because, you know, if any, something like we were talking about earlier, if I got to pay a hundred dollar water bill, like I'm not going to file a claim for that. Right. right. So you got to pay attention to what the deductible is. If you're, if you have an incident that costs you less than $500, you, you probably should just pay out of your pocket. Exactly. You know, unless you think it's going to escalate, you know, from there. But if yeah. it's an easy transaction where, like you said, you want to cut ties with that person, give them a hundred bucks, just do that. And then if you have something that's over $500, that's when you probably decide whether or not to file a claim right. because like we talked about earlier there's a chance that you that your rates can go up you know if it's a big claim or something you know so before you just automatically file like make sure it's worth filing for right and then that that is to the five hundred dollars usually detours people from like you're saying yeah to pay it out of their pocket if needed if sure. it's something small but i mean in most cases i would always say hey put the claim in let's let's you know, or, or talk to me first yeah yeah for sure and where can people reach out to you if they want to, you know, either get some insurance or just learn more about what it is that you do and how you help people in the industry? You can call me directly on my cell phone. I answer uh, there. Or you can call our office or you can email us or you uh, – we have a Facebook page and um, Instagram page. They're not the best right now, but I'll get those nicer. Um, but, yeah, I could mostly just call our 1-800 number on the office or email us. Go directly to our website um, and – you can contact anyone from there. And you've built a special page for the Pool Chasers listeners, right? Is it SPPA.com forward slash Pool Chasers or something? Yeah, that's that's what it's going to be, yeah. So, yeah, there, there will be a application for Pool Chaser listeners. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, we'll put all the links in the notes and everything. So, Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This Thanks, has been a, a great talk. Yeah, it's so much fun. Hey, Pool Chasers. Thanks for checking out this episode. Did you know that each episode has its own page on our website? This is where you can find more information about the guests and episode topic, as well as all the resources that we discuss throughout the show. To get to the webpage, click the link below. Also below, you will find links to the sponsors of the show, as well as links to follow us on our social media channels. On our channels, you will find some of our favorite clips and bonus material. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Our tag is Pool Chasers. We also have a Facebook group for the Pool Chasers community. Here you will find like-minded professionals all looking to make each other better. One last thing. If the episode has brought you value, please check out our Patreon page to support us. And if you could please rate and review the podcast, we would love to hear what your favorite topics are. Thank you for your time and your ear. See you out there, Pool Chasers. Chasers.